um, you know, it wasn't very long ago, a few years, in fact, that many men were afraid of coming forward. They're afraid of sharing these stories. They're afraid of of how our society would view them, that this happened to them. You see, when this happens to a 9, 10, 11-year-old boy, and they harbor these secrets deep inside of them as they grow through their adolescence and young adulthood, and many times until to you know, 50, 60, 70 years old, before they ever revealed this to happen. And through you know the Me Too movement, through our change, people had the courage to come forward. They felt society was ready to listen to them. And mm. so they started to do it. And they started to come forward in droves. And today kind of represents a, a victory for them that the Boy Scouts of America have have declared themselves guilty in the court of public opinion. They acknowledge that this abuse was systematic, that it infiltrated far reaches of their organization, and that they allowed it to happen. So it's 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 validating for these courageous men that have been willing to come forward over over the past year. Andrew, though, explain if you could um, for our international audience. You know, Chapter 11 under U.S. bankruptcy law. Um, could it set a deadline for survivors to make a claim? Oh, it, it absolutely will. So, so two points on that. First, Boy Scouts of America are doing the right thing. They're coming forward. They say, listen, we've got a huge problem. We acknowledge we have a huge problem. We need to find a way out. And the Chapter 11 bankruptcy code allows them that way out. But make no mistake, this is about self-preservation. The Boy Scouts of America face almost unlimited liability due to the number of abuse victims that, that are out there. I mean, we represent over 1,800 individual abuse survivors at the hands of the Boy Scouts. There's tens of thousands around the world that suffered this fate. The only way the Boy Scouts can get through this and continue on is to get through one of these Chapter 11 bankruptcies because the bankruptcy court will set up a finite amount of time called six months that says, hey, we have a debtor called the Boy Scouts of America. If you're a creditor, if this debtor owes you any money, you need to come forward and submit a claim through this process. We'll give you six months to do that. So anybody that, that the Boy Scouts owes money to, anyone that suffered uh, abuse at the hands of the Boy Scouts, come forward now. And you have this six month time period to do it, after which we're closing the books. But that's that Andrew, corporation is done. We're gonna Andrew, see how me, many assets they have to pay out all these debts. Yep. Let, let me just interject here. I mean, so, if the bankruptcy reorganization is as you're describing it, wouldn't it be doing more than to protect the Boy Scouts than to redress past crimes? I mean, what about if you have a boy who is being um, abused now and who only can really talk about it 10 years from now? That window has closed and there's no legal recourse for him. Well, that, that's correct. I mean, the, the, the way the bankruptcy court works that organization as it existed once we're through this p process is no longer. All of the lawsuits we had pending against the Boy Scouts of America are now dead in the water because we don't have a viable defendant anymore. They've surrendered their ass assets to the bankruptcy mm -hmm. court. They get through this process, they create a new organization and they continue their mission of, of the Boy Scouts, but this new organization is no longer liable to, to, to everybody that they may have harmed in the past. So it's important if this happened to you, to come forward because you're going to have a finite amount of time to do this. And, you know, even around the world, we represent people that were abused on, on different military, army, air force bases in Japan, in, in Germany, um, all around the world. So uh, th this affects everyone. Let me, well, on your website, you say it's in our best interest to hear out the Boy Scouts of America and not let them waste their resources on defense um, lawyers. So in your opinion, is a bankruptcy um, settlement would that promise more compensation for your clients than going to court um, and suing the Boy Scouts and hoping, you know, to get, uh, it, obviously you would probably win in court, but do you think you're actually going to get more money, more compensation in this bankruptcy settlement? Well, we, we certainly won't get more money in the bankruptcy uh, because we're not allowed to, to allow each of our clients their day in court, right? A, a jury of our peers that hears the facts that the Boy Scouts of America knew that was going to, this was going on, they continue to allow it to happen. And you hear just these horrific, um, yeah. horrific stories of abuse, mm -hmm. you know, by, by these kids. I mean, of course, that's gonna generate a, a very large number when it comes to a verdict. 
Um, and in Boy Scout, it's going to be more streamlined, but they have a lot of assets. I mean, as you said at the start, it's at least $1.5 billion. That's a lot of money to try to do a lot of good for the lives they ruined. And yeah. oftentimes in a bankruptcy setting, you may get 50 cents on the dollar. We're hoping to get 100 cents on the dollar for every one of our clients. You, you've spoken with the survivors, um, Andrew, and after hearing their accounts, do you think the Boy Scouts of America, do you think it should have a future? And let me just ask you, you know, if you, if you had a little boy today, would you want your little boy to become a scout? Well, so two questions, two answers. We've always had two demands. You know, we've been at this for about 15 months now. And we said to the Boy Scouts of America, we want one, you to make our clients whole. There's no amount of money you could ever give them that that they would take to have continued down that course and suffered the abuse at the hands of a scoutmaster. But do everything in your power to try and do that. And two, if you're going to continue as an organization, actually take the time and put the energy in to making this safe. Mm -hmm. Quit abusing children within your organization. Um, you know, and those, those were our demands. As far as I've seen... They haven't taken it seriously enough to make those corrections. Yeah. I'm hopeful that they will. Yeah. Um, and I do have young children. And based mm -hmm. on what, everything I've seen, there's no way I would trust them in, in a Boy Scout troop without me there by their side every minute of every day. Well, that's, you know, that's a clear message, um, a very direct message that many parents we talked to have said um, was lacking when it should have been there. Andrew Van Arsdale, one of the attorneys in the movement known as Abused in Scouting. Andrew, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you very much.